adaptations of famous motion pictures with Hollywood's greatest stars. Here is your host, Frank Brzee. Greetings again, ladies and gentlemen. Over a century ago, the eyes of the world turned to California and the fabulous wealth of the new gold strike. Men and women with adventure in their hearts braved incredible hardships to reach the new empire of the West, and an epic chapter in the history of the nation was written in their blood and courage. All the color and romance of those fabulous times is captured in the Paramount screen hit, California, and we present it with Ray Milan in his original screen role and Elizabeth Scott as his co-star. It's curtain time, and here's California, starring Ray Milan as Jonathan and Elizabeth Scott as Lily, with Raymond Burr as Captain Coffin. <laughs> The year is 1848. At a prairie town along the western trail, a large wagon train is about to resume its long journey to California. Just a minute, mister. Yeah, what do you want? They tell me the wagon train's getting ready to leave. Who's the boss? I am. Well, then you can help me. How about a lift to California? Not a chance. Why not, Mr. Room for one more. You can ride in one of my wagons and welcome. And you'll be traveling with you, Mrs. Arnold Finn. I'm warning you. Cars ain't the only thing she cheats at. Thank you, Mrs. Everett. We're throwing her out of this town. We don't want the likes of her near us. Well, I'm glad to see you two good ladies are so set against wickedness. I think we can take her off your hands, all right? Well, I think I've got something to say about that, Mr. Fabian. Oh, I can pay my way if that's what you're thinking. Now, look, Fabian, this is your wagon train, and it's my job to get you where you're going. For $1,000 cash, I've guaranteed to lay this outfit down in California all in one piece. There'll be trouble enough. Who are you afraid of? Me or yourself? I don't care what kind of baggage we carry, and I don't want the boys fighting over it. You say there's trouble ahead of us, Mr. Trumbull, and we'll need all the help we can get from Providence. By doing one good deed now, we'll improve our chances with Providence considerably. Have one of the boys get the ladies' baggage, Mr. Trumbull. Oh, thank you. Now, my name's Fabian, miss, and uh, this is Mr. Trumbull. I'm Lily Bishop. Just like that, Mr. Fabian. It's all settled, huh? She comes with us, Jonathan. Now, what time will we be leaving here? Get your people together. We're leaving right now. <laughs> Quiet, Johnny. Looks like a nice, calm night. Yeah. Tell Abe to take the cattle watch, Marty. Warn your section to go easy on water. I've just told the others. The next two days, a long, dry haul. You've told the others? And what about her? The girl in Fabian's wagon? What about her? Take a look, Jim. I'll take care of her right away. What do you think you're doing? That's water. Two days rations and you're washing your hair in it. I ought to make you drink it. How am I supposed to keep clean, Mr. Trumbo? Stay dirty like the rest of us. Where's Fabian? In his other wagon where he belongs. Good night, Mr. Trumbo. Everything all right, Jonathan? Yeah, I think we lived through the night. What's in the box, Grandpa? Yes. Oh, I got my grape cuttings in here. You sure don't look like much right now. Grape cuttings? Awful dry, aren't they? Oh, pitifully dry. I, uh, I heard you just now with Miss Bishop. Sort of rough with her. Well, I'm rough on everybody. I've got to be, Grandpa. Maybe you think it's easy to haul you farmers over the trail. I'd just as soon ride herd on Buffalo. Then why did you hire out as a guy? Maybe I'd just like to keep moving. That could be the reason, couldn't it? You, uh, know Missouri at all? Yes, yeah, some. Been through it. I once sent a vineyard there. Rich, good earth. Why'd you leave it? Because I wanted sun. The grapes need more than earth, Mr. Trumbull. Well, they don't look much like grapes to me. More like a lot of dead sticks. From these dead sticks, I've seen miracles rise every spring in my vineyard. 
Now see it again, please, God, in California. Yeah, you're a long ways from it right now. That's you, Trumbo. I've been looking for you. What's the matter, Panic? You run out of water? Patience would be more like it. How much longer is it going to take? Yeah, we're all in a hurry to get where we're going. You, Mr. Pennock, as well as the rest of us. Oh, so perhaps your reasons are different. I paid my way, didn't I? There's room for more than farmers in California. Mm, room for everybody. California's going to be the next state in the Union, God willing. I wouldn't be too sure, Fabian. Times like these, there may not even be a Union. We don't need that kind of talk, Mr. Pennock. Not in this train. Only a fool would close his eyes to what's going on back east. Little grease on your tongue, Panic. You keep out of this, mule Skinner. What do you know about politics? Politics? Practically nothing. But we've got people with this outfit from Ohio and Kentucky, Wisconsin, and Georgia. The North and South is right here. And we're getting along fine, understand? So if you've got any more of that talk in you, you better say to yourself. And when we get to California? Once we get there, you can tear each other to pieces for all I care. Me? I'll be having a long drink. But until then, keep your mouth shut. Kind of late to be up, Pop, isn't it? Really? Oh, I, I was just reading. Been down to the campfire? There are women on this train, Pop. And they don't like me any more than the women back in Pawnee Flats. Oh, forget about them, Lily. Listen to this. A land of wheat and barley and vineyards. A land of oil and honey. Where thou shalt eat thy bread and enjoy abundance of all things. Somebody else writing about California? Now, this was thousands of years ago. The children of Israel and God leading them to the promised land. Oh, they're pretty words, Pop. Pretty names. I know lots of names, too. Natchez, Memphis, Savannah, New Orleans. Oh, they're pretty, too. But they're places that can break your heart. But I'll find a place somewhere where nobody can throw me out. I'm... I'm grateful to you, Pop, for taking me along to the promised land. Don't let them hurt you, Lily. They don't hurt me, Pop. They can't. the best side I've seen since I left Missouri. Soldiers out here on the desert. Now, just a routine patrol, Mr. Fabian. We, we sure thought you were Indians when we first saw you dust. Uh, we've just been all through this country, Mr. Fabian. No sign of Indians. Now, uh, where's your guide? Well, he went on ahead to scout around a bit. A trombo back yet, Whitey? Ain't seen him, Mr. Fabian. Well, you can tell me. Uh, how's the water hole at Salt Lake? Well, three days ago, our horses stood in it up to the knees. Plenty of water, Captain. Uh huh. Um, about your guy, uh, Trumbo, huh? That's not a common name. He wouldn't have a brother, would he? Not that he spoke of. Well, I once knew a lieutenant by that name. Good soldier, too. Not the kind you'd expect to desert. Well, stick to the trail and good luck. Sound your call, Corporal. We're moving out. <laughs> Twenty miles today, Grandpa. Not too bad for a country like this. And plenty of water to spare for my grape cuttings. Those cuttings still got life in them, huh? Life? <laughs> Someday you'll drink wine from these dead little sticks. Well, I'm not planning on it, Grandpa. Well, any problems? Not a thing, Jonathan. Then I think I'll go join the boys. There's a card game tonight. Seems like Lily's winning all their money. Lily? Yeah, and she's good at it, Grandpa. Too good. Why do you think they ran her out of town? Cheats, you mean? Mark cards? There's been a rumor. I'll soon find out. Oh, Jonathan, uh, wait. Yeah? Have you any family, Jonathan? Any brothers? No. Well, it's none of my business, I know, but uh, were you ever in the Army? Now, look. You hired me to take you to California. If you had any questions like that, you should have asked them long ago. No questions, Jonathan. That's enough for me, Lil. You're expensive company. It's too hot for me, too. So you're all leaving. So early, too. I'm still here, and I'm calling you a bet. It's 
Still want to climb those golden stairs, huh? Well, Mr. Trumbo, what have you got? Jack High straight. What a pity. A full house. Yeah. You know, you're awful cute, Miss Bishop. Where'd you learn poker? At your mother's knee? No, my father's. He was a gambler, Mr. Trumbo. Play the Mississippi River boats. And he always used to say, it's a cheat who's most afraid of being cheated. You, uh, you better stay on your horse after this. It makes you look a lot more important than you really are. Oh, just one thing more. My father also told me to always leave a man burying money. We'll do it again, boys, whenever you're ready. Mind if I talk to you, Lily? It's not my wagon. I don't own it. I came to give you back your burying money. If I need any favors from you, I'll ask for them. Aren't you afraid people will see you? You better get in the wagon. It took you a long time to make up your mind, didn't it? Make up my mind? Why don't you admit it? Back there in Pawnee Flat, there was something else you were afraid of. You know, for a woman, you're pretty smart. Too smart. A woman gets tired knowing too much. Sometimes she likes to be surprised. Like this, maybe? <sighs> that was what you wanted, wasn't it? To kiss a woman. Well, that's exactly what you're not going to get. So now you're paying me off, huh? You sat like judgment on me. They're throwing me out of town. You thought just what they wanted you to think. You didn't need any proof, oh no. You knew, just by looking at me, you knew. And ever since then, all these weeks trying to shame me. You're not a hard man to figure, Mr. Trumbo. That was your way of making love to me. Then you come here and expect me to fall into your arms and be thankful for the favor you're doing me. I came here to give you back your money. Pretty high and mighty, aren't you? Boss of a wagon train. But let me tell you this. If I live long enough, and I will, I'm going to pull you down off that fancy horse of yours and shove your face right in the muck, so help me. Anything else to tell me? It'll have to wait, won't it? Aren't you being called? Trouble, Mr. Trumbo? Yeah, probably. Whatever it is, it's tame to what you're going to get from me. Now get out of here! It's gold! They found gold in California! Gold! Who are these men? They just brought us the news. That's right, mister. We've seen your campfires. We figured we'd better share the good news. Where have they found the gold? Somewhere's out of Sacramento, a place called Sutter's Mill. Ah, they're always finding gold in California, but nobody ever saw it. Well, it's straight this time, mister. Mountains of gold, tons of gold. All right, we're heading for California. If you like, you can string along with no, us. No, thanks, mister. We ain't waiting for no wagon. We, we aim to get there while there's still standard rules. <laughs> It's no use, Grandpa. This is the end of your wagon train. They're all going to look for gold. Gold. I hate the word. It'll bring us nothing but murder and greed. We steal it out of the ground and we'll steal it from one another. Look at their faces, Jonathan. Look at their eyes. Abe, don't be a fool. Don't leave the train. I'd be a fool to stay, Mr. Fabian. The quicker you get there, the richer you'll be. But your wagon, Abe, all your belongings. Give me an old Trumbo. From here on in, I'm my own boss. You want my wagon, it's yours. See you in California, gentlemen. You'll need those tools, Slim. You'll need your plow. Stay with the train. What train? There ain't any train anymore. We're going by horse. Ralph, get me a plow, too. Gold plated. He's right, John. There isn't any train anymore. So you're going too, huh? I am. Nobody's going to get to California ahead of me. Uh -huh. Look, I suppose you've got plenty of reason to hate me, but, well, I don't want anything to happen to you. Breaking up the wagon train, it's liable to be dangerous. I'll take my chances. Now, before you go, there's something I'd like to say about... Well, about last night, I... Well, speak up, Mr. Trumbo. I might begin to think you're not so sure of yourself after all. Look, I'm trying to apologize. I'm sorry I slapped you. You ready to go, Lil? That's all you got. You're going with him? With Pennock? 
You got anything to say about it? Not a thing, except I almost made a mistake. As long as we're leaving, Trumbo, I got a present for you. My bull whip. I won't be needing it anymore. It's all yours. See you in California, Mr. Trumbo. How are you feeling, Jonathan? Any better? I feel like what I am. The biggest fool in the territory. Oh, easy now, mister. Just you stay put. You had a broken bone on that shoulder. Letting panic knock me off a horse like that. It might have been a bullet instead of a whip. They've all gone, huh? Yeah. They're the only ones left. We're staying here a while. That shoulder will take time to mend. 700 miles between us and California, and this had to happen. I mean, no hurry to get there. Sun and the soil will still be waiting. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder if we'll ever see any of them again. Pennock, Lily. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder. Act two of California will continue in a moment. What's the word for the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service? Today, the word is climb on the bandwagon. We've all heard that phrase, the first bandwagon was horse-drawn and large enough to carry a full band, usually associated with publicizing some sort of an event. The bandwagon is most generally thought of in connection with the circus or a political event. Often the political candidates would ride on the bandwagon. Their supporters would climb on the bandwagon to show their support. Often this public display of confidence was given in the hopes of gaining some favor from the candidate if he was successfully elected. Then there were the other folks who just climbed on the bandwagon to join the crowd. Today we still see those who will flock to join some popular fad, whether it be politics or a circus. They figuratively climb on the bandwagon. That's the word for the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. Act Two of California, starring Ray Milan as Jonathan and Elizabeth Scott as Lily. Two months have gone by, and the gold rush in California is at the height of its hysteria. Overnight, scores of towns have sprung up. Among them, a place called Faro City, a collection of half-built shacks and tents. The largest building in town is a saloon, the Golden Lily. Hello, Panic. Trumbull. Reaching for a gun, Ben? Just don't try anything. I won't, not just now. <laughs> so you finally made it. Yeah. Where's Lily? Can't get her off your mind, huh? There's a lot of things I can't get off my mind, but I'm going to take them one at a time. Who's a stranger, Pennock? Huh? Oh, his name's Trumbo. This here's Mr. Pike. Welcome to Pharaoh City, Mr. Trumbo. Thanks. You're a sailor, huh? I ain't no scurvy landlubber. One of these days, Mr. Pike, somebody's going to cut your throat. Where you going, Mr. Trumbo? This rough talk upset you? Oh, I think I see a friend of mine. Hey, Whitey! Johnny! Johnny! So you did get it. <laughs> How about you? Millionaire yet? Uh, me? I'm lucky if I eat once a day. But I thought everybody in town was rich. Ask him what's going on. That thieving gouger. Pike? That's right, Pike. Go on, ask him, Johnny. Him and his captain coughing. Watch your lip, farmer. Not no more, I won't. I come here, Johnny, expecting to find a free country. Instead, I find a shark named Captain Coffin squeezing the life blood out of the place. But you got a claim, haven't you? But I need water to work my claim. I got to buy water from Coffin. Pay him for every drop. I got to buy Coffin's food at Coffin's prices. I got to buy tools off of him. A hundred dollars for a shovel. Shut up, mister. Two days ago, my claim started to pay out. Good tools. And right then, Coffin and his gang move in. Says they're foreclosing for debt. They drive me off the place with pick handles. I warned you, Hayseed. <laughs> All right, boys, let's take care of them.
What's the damage this time, Mr. Pike? A couple of chairs and a mirror, Miss Lily. I'm beginning to think you're too expensive to have around. It takes a long time to get furniture out here. Uh, you said you wanted to see that fellow when he came to. Well, he's all right now, I guess. Mike clouded him with a bottle. Where is he? I dumped him in your office, Miss Lily. Thanks. Well, Mr. Trumbo, I'm glad to see you're still alive. I came to this place looking for you. I didn't expect such a big reception. I told you once before how I felt about you. You know, I'm just beginning to understand something. No woman can go around hating a man the way you say you hate me. Not unless there's something else on her mind. This much I'll tell you. If you ever so much as set foot in here again, I'll have a better man than Pike throw you out. You talk like maybe you own this place. I do. Maybe I shouldn't ask how you got it. Well, then don't. Must take quite a man to stake you to a layout like this. Why, just the furnishings alone must have... Hey, what's this? It's a model of a ship. Yeah. A famous ship, too. A brig. Nice ship. For a mule, Skinner, you seem to know a lot about ships. My father was first mate on a whaler. Let me see that model. Congo Queen. Pharaoh Coffin Master. Coffin. You know, I keep hearing that name. Why do you mention it? Yes, Lily, uh, now I understand a lot of things. Something amuse you, friend? I said you had company, Lily. Don't worry. I can take care of him. You're a long way from Africa, Captain Coffin, and the slave trade. Why slaves, Mr. Trumbo? And I can get more for a shovel than I can for a black. Over running helpless men off their claims with pick handles? These are fast-moving times. No room for helpless men. This is an odd place to find a man who remembers the Congo Queen. A fine ship, mister. A fine name. She was a floating graveyard. I used to hear back east how people crossed to the other side when you walked down a the street. They said you had the stink of death about you. Anything else, Mr. Trumbo? Yeah, they told me no court would try you because no one would hold that a black was a man, just an animal to be beaten and chained. Most men love the chains they wear, Mr. Trumbo. They need a master, the way an infant needs its mother. You know, Coffin, for all your ways, I've heard it said you're a frightened man, afraid that one day a bolt would break, a chain would give, and the blacks would come swarming up out of the hold. What do you dream about at night, Captain Coffin? Of California, friend. California. You never hear the drag of the chains below decks? The chanting of the slaves over their dead? I even heard rumors of nightmares you've had. Shut up. That's true, isn't it, Captain? In Pharaoh City, the truth has a price on its head. And you don't speak it, Mr. Trumbo, unless you're armed. Nor do you intrude into another man's dream. As for you, Lily, well, I had you wrong. You don't care for anybody but Lily Bishop. Who said that the wages of sin is death? Looks like they come pretty high in Pharaoh City. I'll kill you. I'll kill you! Next time, I won't spoil her, aim, Mr. Trumbo. I'm obliged, Captain. Happy dreams. Why did you do it? Why did you do it? Because I knew you would cry over him afterwards. I should not like to see you crying. Lily. Game's open, gentlemen. Place your bets, please. Place your bets. Close that table, Mike. What's the matter, Miss Lil? Ain't their money any good? I said close that table. You heard her, gentlemen. Sorry. I thought I told you to stay out of here, Trumbo. Well, this time I didn't come to see you, Lil. This is business. I don't want any business from you. What's the matter? You scared? What have you got that I should be scared of? Well, wouldn't be my luck, would it? I got quite a pile of chips here. Mike, get up. I'll deal. And the game's still open? It's open. But only to Trumbo and me. And this time, Trumbo, there won't be any burying money. Well, thanks for the warning, Lil. Now go ahead and deal. You win again, Mr. Trumbo. Not quitting, are you? I never quit. 
How much? How much you got? Four stacks of chips. All right, four stacks. Looks like you're bidding into a queen, Lil. All right with you? Anything you say. Then take three cards. Well? A four. A tray. A ten. Too bad, Lil. Pay him off, Mike. The game's closed. Lil, you, you ain't busted, are you? Looks like I am. Just a minute. I'll cut you, Lil. Every chip I've won against this place. If you win, I'm broke. If I win, I get the saloon. Everything or nothing, high card wins. Lay off, Lil. He's too lucky tonight. Look, a while back, you said you weren't afraid of anything I've got. Well, I got this pile of chips, and it says you've lost your nerve. Shuffle the cards, Mr. Trumbo. Now cut. Not too good, Lil. Four of diamonds. You got him licked, Lil. Most anything's better than a four. Sure. Oh, go ahead. Cut a card. A deuce. The deuce of space. Ah, looks like I'm the new proprietor. Turn everything over to him, Mike. All right, boys, let's have a drink on the house. Here's your piece of paper, Mr. Trumbo. A quick claim deed. You don't have to leave, Lil. You can work here, you know. Don't do me any favor. I'm not. I'll need a good dealer. Maybe you can get a, back a piece of Coffin's money. It wasn't Coffin's money. No? Whose was it? Mine. I bought this place from Coffin with what it took me five years to save. Yeah. But that's my business, not yours. Sure. That's the way you feel. That's exactly the way I feel. Good night, Mike. Good night, Mr. Lill. Hey, Mike, take a thousand dollars. See that she gets it. Burying money. She won't need burying money, not where she's going. Why not? Coffin's place. <laughs> Captain will see you now. Straight ahead, senor, into the library. Mr. Trumbo, frankly, I hardly expected you to accept my invitation. I appreciate it. Just curiosity, Captain. I've heard about this place of yours, but I never believed a word until now. People said it was a palace. Well, they were right. I bought it from a grandee of Spain, Mr. Trumbo. Thousands of acres in this hacienda. It's more than a palace. It's also a citadel, as I'm sure you've observed. Armed guards, thick walls, iron gates. Are there slaves in California too, Captain Coffey? You talk like a fool. But you didn't send for me to listen to me talk. Oh, I hear you took over the golden lily last night. I like a man who takes what he wants and doesn't ask too many questions. I like to see such a man get ahead, but not too far ahead. Hmm? I have a good piece of this country in my hands, Mr. Trumbo. You'd be stupid to think I'd let any of it go. I'll buy the golden lily at a fair price, and you can leave California. Or you can stay here and go along with me. Do you know what that means? I'll do all right alone. As a saloon keeper? I could possess all of California and the power that goes with it if I had a handful of men like you. Sorry, no deal. At least we understand each other. Good day, Mr. Trumbo. Mr. Pike. No deal, he said, huh? No deal. We'll dispose of Trumbo tonight. I'll find Miss Bishop. If she's not occupied, I'll be waiting for her in the patio. And if she is occupied... You should know by now that in certain matters I am a man of unbounded patience, Mr. Pike. I shall still wait. Look away, look away. And in all my travels, Lily, I never found another island like it. Such tranquility, such a paradise. Yes, a man could well forget himself there. Why didn't you stay? Alone? No. But I could return there and be happy with you, Lily. Do you hear me? I'd like to take you there someday. Someday? Maybe I'd like to go. As my wife, Lily. 
Does it seem so strange? All my life I've wanted to be just that. A wife. Does that seem so strange to you? I have no illusions that you would love me. But I believe we could be happy together. I know what they say about me, a slaver and all the rest of it. But everything I did, I did because I had to. Nobody ever helped me. My father was a drunken sail rigger. I took more beatings before I was 12 than any felon does in a lifetime. I ran away, lived under the wharves like a rat. Then one day, one day I saw a captain step from his ship to the shore. Bright buttons gleaming in the sun, giving orders like a giant, like a king. In time, I became the master of a ship. Now I'm a master of a town. Dirty, stinking place that it is. But tomorrow, tomorrow I'll be master of a country. All of California, Lily. And when that happens, I... I... You're not even listening. There are other thoughts in your eyes. You're thinking of someone else. Yes. Who? I am. Of a little boy. I was trying to picture you like you said. I'm beginning to understand you. I love you, Lily. I love you. I think, Mr. Tr I was trying to picture you like you said. I'm beginning to understand you. I love you, Lily. I love you. I think Mr. Trumbo's ready to listen to you now, Captain. Come on in. The rest of you men get out of his office. Close the door, Mr. Pike. None of this is my wish, Mr. Trumbo. You made your own decision. You didn't come here just to have me beaten up. Only to tell you that this is your last night in Pharaoh City. But before you leave, I want you to sign this. Quit claim deed for the Golden Lily. There's a pen. Sign it. If you want to kill him, Captain, here, use a gun. Uh, kill him? No. No, no gun. There are other ways. Put him on a horse. Tie him, hand and foot, then lose him in the desert. I'll see you tomorrow, then, at the Hacienda. Oh, I won't be there. I'm going south to meet Senator Creel. Creel? He's here? He's here. Six months more, Mr. Pike, and I'll own the entire territory of California. I'm moving on. Where are you going? I'm going to get a college education, an associate degree. A college education gives you mobility. Well, I'm moving up. What do you mean? I'm going to get a bachelor's degree in computer science. The education counselor said that all my programming experience is worth college credit. And if I take some courses... College-level education can help you advance in your job specialty. There are any number of courses and programs available to service members overseas. So if you like the kind of mobility a college degree can give you, stop by the education office. You could be on your way up. Every day, we go looking for trouble. And do you know what we find? What do you think is the biggest health problem today? Cancer. That would have to be cancer. Yeah, the big C, cancer. These people are wrong, and that's the trouble. While cancer may be the most talked about problem, it isn't the biggest. For every person who dies from cancer, more than two die from heart-related problems, like high blood pressure. This not only affects almost one in four adults today, but it's often symptomless which means nearly 17 and a half million Americans are needlessly risking their lives to cardiovascular problems without realizing it. This is the kind of trouble we look for. We're the American Heart Association, committed to reducing death and disabilities due to heart disease through research, prevention, improved treatments, and information which could save your life.
Heart disease, huh? <laughs> Who'd ever think of that? The American Heart Association. Oh, right. The American Heart Association. We're fighting for your life. Frank Brzee returns to the microphone. Act three of California, starring Ray Milan as Jonathan and Elizabeth Scott as Lily. Six weeks have gone by since Jonathan Trumbo's sudden departure from Pharaoh City. But now, just as unexpectedly, he's returned. Not to the town, but to the shack of his old friend, Mr. Fabian. It wasn't like you to sell out, Jonathan. Run off without telling anybody. Sell out? I was run out. Captain Coffin. He did a pretty good job, too, Grandpa. Almost perfect. Yeah, but where have you been? I'm not too sure, Whitey. Over most of that desert, I guess. If it hadn't been for a couple of Indians that I cashed in long ago. What are you going to do, Johnny? Well, first off, I'm going to borrow your gun. What good will it do you to kill Coffin? Men like Coffin and like weeds in the field. You have to dig them up by the roots. You can't do that with a gun. Jonathan, lots of things have happened while you've been gone. They're planning a convention at Monterey to make California another state in the Union. And when that happens, they'll take care of men like Coffin. Sorry, Grandpa, I can't wait that long. Besides, if there is a convention, he'll be running it. Yeah, maybe Johnny's right, Mr. Fabian. Look what's going on right now. Tonight. What? I'm not sure, Jonathan. Some big shindig at Coffin's Hacienda. Senator Creel is there, politicians from back east. Some of them rich Spaniards, too. Mm, sure like to know what they're cooking up. So would I, Whitey. There's only one way to find out. I'm going there. This much we know, gentlemen, that in the hands of the delegates will rest the decision as to whether or not California becomes a state. As I've told you, I intend to be a delegate myself. Even so, even so, the convention may go against us. That's why we're meeting here now. What is Senor Coffin proposing? Immediate preparation for the armed seizure of California. Isn't that rushing things a little? I think Senator Creel can answer that. You're a banker, Mr. Barrett. Surely you should know that the whole country is rushing toward an armed conflict. When that happens, a strong and independent California can affect decisively the outcome. Senor, I too would like California to be a great and independent country. And yet, if the people should be against it, I would be a fool to fight them. Yes. Yes, you, you ask a great deal from us, Senator Creel, but uh, what can we expect from you? If we're going to take the territory by force, what do we do about weapons? Powder and shot don't grow on trees. No, Mr. Willoughby, they do not. Come with me, gentlemen. We'll take a little walk. I'll show you ample evidence of Senator Creel's good faith. Senora, senora. Senor, who are you? Well, I suppose you could call me a guest. You don't remember me. Oh, yes, many weeks ago to see the master. Please, senor, you do not tell him. You do not tell. Tell him what? I am not to come here to the chapel. He keeps it always locked, senor. Why lock up a chapel? I do not know. But if he finds out... Senor, they're coming here. Listen. There's no time to get out. Get behind the altar. Hurry. Follow me, gentlemen. Perhaps you will find these precincts overly pious. But I assure you they are practical. Here. Here in this ante room. Behold. Guns. Yes, guns and ammunition from the floor to the ceiling. Good heavens, enough to equip a regiment. But how did you get it here? Our friend, Senator Creel, smuggled it in right under Colonel Stewart's nose. Stewart? He's back in California? He's in camp just outside of Ferro City. You don't suppose he's got wind of this? If I know Stewart, he's too busy with his own political career. 
Shall we return to the house, gentlemen? Those guns. Why does he have them here? I do not know, senor. It is a sin against God. Be careful, senor. You're only one against men. Just forget you ever saw me here. Miss Bishop, is she here tonight? Si, senor. Soon the dancing will commence in the patio. She will be there, senor. Thank you. Lily! Lily, wait! I tremble. But you know this isn't a safe place for you. Since one of you cares. I don't. Then why warn me? Because I'm not afraid anymore of you or anything. For the first time in my life, I've got something I've always wanted. And what would that be? I'm... I'm going to marry Barrow Coffin. You don't love him? He knows it. You wouldn't understand, would you? That a woman can sometimes manage without love. Providing the price is all right. Two months ago, I would have hated you for that. No, it doesn't matter. You talk hard, Trumbo, but underneath you're human like everyone else. Oh, why didn't you ever show that side of me? Instead of always trying to, to hurt me. Why do you tell me that now? Because it's too late now to do anything about it. You know, you were right about me trying to hurt you. Don't ask me why. Maybe, maybe I wanted to even up with a lot of other women. And I'm going to hurt you again. Worse than ever. You can't hurt me. That's one thing I've promised myself. You can't hurt me ever again. Look, I came here tonight to kill Coffin. Well, I'm not going to. Not tonight. I've found out enough about him to make me want to find out a little more. But I'll come back, Lil. And when I do, nothing's going to save him. Oh, no, no, you mustn't. Even if I loved you, you couldn't stop me now. Good night, Lil. What's the matter, darling? You seem unhappy. Do I? I'm not unhappy. Lily, in all my life, I never want to cause you a moment's sadness. If only I could... What was that? I heard something. Oh, it's just the wind, Pharaoh, stirring the branches. No, no. Well, see for yourself. The leaves are brushing against the roof. Only the wind. For a moment, it sounded... Sounded like naked feet shuffling across the deck of a ship. I've come to see you to make a deal, Colonel Stewart. It's hardly a practice of the army to make deals with deserters. Colonel Stewart, I didn't wake you up in the middle of the night just to have myself arrested. Sir, did you ever hear of a Captain Pharaoh Coffin? Man who's running for the Monterey Convention? That's not all he's running for. He's setting himself up to take over all of California with enough guns to start a small war. I know all about Captain Coffin and the guns that were smuggled in. As soon as my reinforcements but arrive... But you won't need reinforcements, sir. You won't need the army at all, not if you'll agree to what I'm asking. Confound it, Trombo. I don't make deals with deserters. But if you'll help me wipe out my court-martial, I'll take Coffin off your hands. How? Kill him? Something like that. That way of settling disputes is over, Trumple. If you want to kill this man, kill him politically. Run somebody against him and break his back at the polls. Do you know anybody who's really respected around here? An honest man? Well, I know a farmer like that, Michael Fabian. But what if he doesn't break Coffin's back? I will make a deal, Trumple. I'll give you your freedom for 30 days till after the Monterey Convention. Then you report back here and you face a court-martial. If you don't, you won't get just two years. You'll get 20. Yes, sir. Fair enough. Just one thing more. That woman at Fort Marcy, just who was chasing who? Well, it's your guess, sir. She was hardly worth deserting for. Well, it was either that or shoot the husband. Anything else, sir? You have 30 days of freedom. Thank you, sir. <laughs> The boats have just been crowded. 
ladies and gentlemen, our duly elected delegate to the Monterey Convention is Michael Fabian. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Fabian. Well, now, you think you'd drive way out here to see me. So you won the election. In a way, I'm very happy for you. Oh, only in a way? Come in, Lily, come in, sit down. You see, I, I didn't come to congratulate you. I'm here to ask you not to go to Monterey. But why not? Well, I'm afraid for you. Don't you see this whole thing is Trumbo's idea? He's using you to pay off a grudge. Is he? You know... You know, I, I know Mr. Trumbo, Mr. Faney, and I know Captain Coffin. Well, surely he didn't send you here, Lily, not Coffin. No, but I heard them talking. Farrow, Pike, Senator Creel. Oh, please believe me. They'll do anything to stop you. A man can't stay out of danger hiding under a bed, Lily. And they can no more keep California from begin, becoming a state than, than they can keep the sun from shining. I'll tell you once again, Mr. Fabian, don't go to Monterey. I've got to go, Lily, but thanks for the warning. I didn't really think you'd listen to me. Well, good night, Mr. Fabian. Pardon, senor. Yeah? You are senor Trumbo. You are here in Monterey for the convention, yes? A lot of people are here for the convention. Senor, as you may observe, I am a little drunk. It is not a habit, I assure you. I am Don Luis Rivera Hernandez. In California, that is a name of honor. And with honor, a man should be more careful. Do you agree? I wouldn't know. Senor, your friend Fabian. He speaks tomorrow. Any objections? Do not let him. Take him away at once, senor. Why? I do not like to see a man killed in cold blood. <laughs> sense, Jonathan. The convention's about to reopen. I can't stay here in a hotel room. There's only one place you're going, Grandpa, and that's home. If you don't listen to me, you're going to be killed. And who's been telling you that nonsense? The man who was drunk. And you're worrying about the word of a drunk? Look, there's something else you better know. I got you into this, Grandpa, but I didn't give a bent nickel for what you were fighting for. All I wanted was to fix Coffin. That's why I persuaded you to run against him. I've known that for some time. But I'm glad you told me. You're still going back to that convention hall? I am. You forget the folks who voted for me, Jonathan. They have faith in me. I got to keep faith with them. You should understand that. Well, I... I think I do. Well, if it's that important to you, it ought to be that important to me. Let's go. in this hall so insistent on rushing California into statehood. Statehood will only make California a pawn in the civil war already threatening to separate the rest of the country. If Fabian's measure is passed, it is inevitable that those of us favoring an independent empire, a republic of California, must either separate from it or contest the decision by force of arms. <laughs> The chair, the chair recognizes Mr. Fabian. I just heard the words independent empire. So did you all. A slip of the tongue, Mr. Willoughby? No. No, I don't think so. No. Order, order. Mr. Fabian will be heard. I say that's nothing but treason. We are men from every state in the Union. We're farmers and miners and everything else. What we want California to be is what she should be. Another state in what I believe is the greatest land on earth. Hey, 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 hey. That was a bad move. 
coffin. We're lucky we got out of Monterey with our lives. I'm still curious to know just who shot Mr. Fabian. Are you out of your mind? Still say I don't know. Mr. Pike, perhaps. Pennock, maybe. There are a dozen who might have done it. Under your orders. Don't be a child. You know as well as I do, it would come to fighting sooner or later. Let it be sooner. We're prepared and the others are not. I'll be leaving you at Sacramento. I uh, suddenly feel the need of a long sea voyage. Good luck with your war, Captain Coffin. Get her at once. Get Miss Lily at once. I have told you, senor. She's not here. Then find her. Tell her there's a priest waiting in the chapel, waiting to marry us. The priest is gone, senor. He said... He said you cannot use the holy church as you would your chattel. Lily, find Miss Lily. She went to the town this morning, senor, before you returned. The news reached here first, senor. What news? Answer me, answer me or I... Senor Fabian has been murdered. Mr. Pike? No. I've come back, Farrell. Oh, Lily. Lily, you didn't leave me. You didn't leave me. She killed him, Farrell. Just as sure as if you pull the trigger yourself. Lily... What do you care about, Fabian? Yes, yes, I killed him. I'll kill everyone who tries to stand in my way. You'll never kill again, Farrell. Lily, that gun. Oh, no, you wouldn't. That's the only reason I came back. Captain Coffin, they're on their way here. Lily, don't touch her. Don't touch her. You struck her, Mr. Pike. You struck her. She had a gun. She tried to kill you. Lily, Lily. Captain, Captain, listen to me. The whole town's at the gates. Trumbo's coming for you. We've got one chance, but we've got to get out of here. Get some water. Get some Captain, wine. Captain, please, Lily. I've got horses Lily beside Paddy. There might still be time to make a run for it. I'll call the men. Pass out the rifles. No one can touch me here. They've no one. They've gone. The men, the servants, everyone. You've got no one left, Captain. It's you and me now. We're both dead unless we run for you it. You struck Lily. You struck her. She just lies there. You've killed her. Kill her. Can't you see that she's breathing? Come on, I'll take her with us. You touch her and I'll kill you. Listen. Feet across the deck. Oh, you betrayed me, didn't you, Pike? You betrayed me. Listen, I can hear them. You took the keys and unlocked the chains. The slaves, I can hear them. Slaves, they're coming up on deck. It's Trumbo's men you hear. I told you, Captain. They're coming across the deck. Oh, you betrayed me, Pike. You betrayed me. <laughs> Captain... You betrayed me, Pike! Lily! Tell them they can stop shooting. Where is he, Lil? You better tell us. We'll find him anyway. He's in the next room. He's out of his mind. I... I know now that he was always out of his mind. Coffin. They'll never hang me, Trumbo. They'll never hang me. Well, maybe it's better this way, Lil. Come on. We're going back to town. You can stay here, Lil. He'd want you to stay here, here at his place. I remember when those vines out there were just a bunch of dead sticks. You know, it's as if I was seeing them for the first time, the way he always saw them. Fabian saw a lot of things that most folks missed. Well, I'll say goodbye, Lily. Where are you off to, Trumbo? I got a date with the army, remember? How long does it mean? Yeah. Two, maybe. You... You'll come back, won't you? Where will you be by then? Right here. Waiting. I'll be back.
Thank you for joining me for another production of the Radio Theater. This is Frank Brzee saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs>